Oh yeah, we're about to make some ribs for dinner. I'm loving a good bit of pork ribs. Pork spare ribs are one of the greatest foods to be eaten as long as you're able to eat pork, of course. So let's get it started. What we're gonna do first, of course, is start with the rub. The rub here to be made with sweet smoked paprika. And that's gonna all go in here. We've got some bird's eye chilies, uh, nice and little spicy bits. We've got some black peppercorns. We've got there the uh, garlic powder and the salt as well. So what we're gonna first start with, of course, is getting the black peppercorns. Black peppercorns are a great way to go because they have a little bit of pep, but not too much spice. We're gonna go for about one and a half te uh, teaspoons of pepper. Um, and what we're gonna do is, they're in the mortar and pestle because I'm gonna crush them up because we want a nice rough crush on those. We want them to be big pieces, but we don't want them to be whole pieces. Whole pieces are not as much fun to bite into. Now you'll note, my table was shaking. That's how vigorous this act is. Really, really good fun. Strongly recommend anybody get one. Here we go, we've got some nice, roughly crushed peppercorns. That one and a half teaspoons turns into a fair bit of spread. It doesn't need to be super, super fine. We don't need it to be crushed completely. We don't need to be powder. All we want it to be is nice chunks that are going to provide an excellent flavor. Uh, always good to have a bowl there just aside, just to put your rub in because you always end up making more than you need. And you can save the rest for later. Always a good thing. So once we have our pepper in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add what is the god of all seasoning, salt. Everybody knows salt is brilliant. How about three teaspoons of salt? A Little bit of extra salt. Trust this is for two racks of ribs so it won't be a real problem. That's gonna go in with the one and a half teaspoons of pepper. You always want a little more salt than you have pepper. We're gonna grab some garlic powder garlic powder here is going to provide an excellent bit of flavor. Everybody loves a good bit of garlic. Uh, garlic going with pork is an absolute godsend and strongly recommend putting garlic in your rubs. We have paprika, sweet smoked paprika to be specific. What this is going to do is two things. This is going to give us a brilliant flavor. If you haven't had paprika, which is derived from a different chili, uh, it's very flavorful. We're going to have a good heaped teaspoon of that. The other thing that it's going to do is give us a bit of colour. With our two bird's eye chilies, these are very, very hot. We're just going to knock off the ends. These particular ones are ones that I grew at my house and have dried out since. I'm going to keep all those chilli seeds because we do want a bit of heat to this rub. So we're just going to roughly chop through that, trying to keep as many of the seeds together as possible while knocking through the dry skin. Just going to give them a nice rough chop, collect it all together, and give it a further rounded rough chop. And it's spray off to the side, we call them casualties of war. And it's a real, real bummer. We're gonna collect all them up, all those little bits of chili, and boom, into the rub bowl. Never having enough spice uh, is my attitude towards things without chili. But if you don't like chili, if you don't like spice, don't add this. This is an optional and would strongly recommend against it if you are sensitive to spice. But if you are, you know, don't complain to me when your rub isn't as good. That isn't my fault. Give it a good mix. You want to give it a good mix so that we get a good, even uh, spread when we do spread it. The uh, other way to do this would be to have a shaker. So if you have just like a salt shaker, but like a big salt shaker, or put it all in a jar, close the lid, and let your biceps do the work as opposed to your wrist. Personally, I have very strong wrists, so this is not a problem for me. Because of sports, yes, sports. Once we have a nice, thoroughly mixed rub, it is time to bring out the star of the show. The star of the show is the pork spare ribs. Right, we have here two nice little racks of ribs. It's completely unprepped, we're not doing competition, so we're not going to chop the ends off or anything like that. But what we are going to do is note this membrane. This stuff right here is something you don't want on your ribs. It's tough to chew, it doesn't really render out, and it's just stringy. It gets stuck in your teeth. It's like floss, but not floss that your dentist is okay with. I found a really easy way to do this. You get your butter knife, and you want to get up under the membrane, but between it and the meat, and kind of create a bit of separation. Once you start the separation, it's much, much easier, but starting it can be a bit of a trick. So just with your butter knife, just work it in there, and eventually you'll feel the meat pop away. And there we have a bit of a foothold, or in this case, a finger hold. Take your pick. If you use your feet to prep your ribs, I will not judge. What you want to do then is grab yourself a bit of paper towel. Paper towel makes this job so much easier. It gives you a bit of grip on the membrane, and that membrane will just kind of tear right off. 
Now just go slow with this because if it tears off in multiple pieces it just takes longer. And when you do get it off all in one piece it is utterly satisfying like peeling a mandarin or a clementine for my American friends in one piece. Once that's off though we have what will end up as much more tender ribs. We have a second rack here. We can do the exact same thing. Get up under it. Be careful not to chop your thumb or anything else actually. All fingers are quite important. All fingers were created equal and you love to hear that. So we're just doing the same thing. We're finally waiting for that pop where the membrane comes away from the meat. Once that's happened, you want to get under it, get your foothold or your finger hold again. And then, and hang on a sec, my washing machine's making noise. And we're going to do the exact same thing and pull it up with a bit of paper towel. Paper towel acts as a real good gripping agent here. Uh, I strongly recommend using the paper towel. If you can do it without it, hey, look, don't waste the paper towel. That's absolutely brilliant. I would, I would prefer to as well, but I can't. Now I'm fucking useless, apparently. So, such is life. Anyway, we pull away the membrane, same thing. Some of them are a little harder than others, and if you do tear it, look, don't worry about it. You can come back for that in a sec. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It is not a problem. You have not failed yet. But once that bit's torn off, like a glove, we have effectively degloved these ribs. But that's like what it's chewing through, a friggin' glove. We don't want to chew through a friggin' glove. Gloves are not comfortable to chew through. They're very chewy. And once that's all off, we're going to have better ribs for it. This is also an excellent opportunity to take out any of these little random pointy bones that you do get, because ever so often in production of this sort of thing, butchering, you'll get left with little pieces. And there we have some nicely done ribs. What we're gonna do next is grab some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce in this case will act as a binding agent so that makes our rub stick just that little bit better. And what we're gonna do is grab uh, your Worcestershire sauce and you're going to provide just a bit of a thin layer on the, this is the meat side of the ribs. You're gonna put just a bit of a thin layer and just rub that on. All we wanna do here is coat all the areas of the top of the ribs. This is not for flavoring in this stage, in, in this stage, but it will create a touch of flavor. Realistically, all it is for is to make the rub stick. We want that rub to stick really, really well and make sure that all parts of the pork get tasty rub on them. Once that's on, you don't have to go too hard at it, just a nice soft rub. Flip them over. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Exactly the same, because now that that membrane is gone, the meat is going to absorb the rub a lot better as well. As otherwise, all that rub goes straight into the membrane. We just want to spread that Worcestershire sauce straight over there. And all, again, this is doing is acting as a foothold for the rub. We want that rub to stick really well so that it creates as much flavor as possible. And there it is. There you have it. Right here, once we have our Worcestershire sauce rubbed ribs, we're going to grab that rub that we've made. And all we're going to do here is a nice, rough shake onto the ribs because we're gonna to have to spread it out by hand. The only way to do this and not have to do it by hand would be to make 10 times as much rub. But we give it a nice even spread onto the pork ribs. And what you see is they will start to change color ever so. There's a couple of reasons for this. One major reason though is because the Worcestershire sauce is grabbing that paprika, that sweet smoked paprika, and it's creating a nice deep red color. Ideally, if you have a custom Mac Daddy cutting board, that's the best way to do it. Here we have our barbecue. Barbecue has obviously got some hot charcoal in it. That white bit means that your charcoal is very, very hot. When they get that gray on them, they are as hot as they can be. We're gonna slip these ribs to the other side of the barbecue, away from the coals. I'm gonna grab some butter. Butter is a brilliant thing to go on ribs, and it will do a couple of things. One, it will impart a bit of extra flavor, but two, it will impart some extra moisture to those ribs, because there's nothing worse than dry meat when you're trying to eat. You don't want dry meat. Take it from me, who has done this many, many times, and fucked up at least once, probably twice. Get that lid back on, vent facing away from where your wood is so that it will smoke over the top. Two and a half odd hours later, we should be looking at some nice color with some nice moisture you can see coming through the top. Those charcoals are nearly done. They've got probably another hour or so worth of burning at tops, but we'll come back. Three and a half hours later, of course, they're about done. Now, keep in mind, I did not wrap these, but these will still be juicy because of that butter. We've got some meat retraction off those bones. Once it's coming off the bones, it's usually pretty good to eat. Bang them on that board and look at them because they're beautiful. Then we're going to bang them on a bun, bang off the side, eat it with some potato bait because that's dinner, my dudes. Hope you enjoyed watching it and uh, hopefully we'll do some more. 
with some more face in them at some point. Mm -hmm.